church. This is, as you can see, we're moving on into a new season. We are moving into the season where we celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. We're getting ready for Pentecost next week, and this Sunday we are sheltering in remembrance, focusing on those memories that are with us and that carry us through this strange season we find ourselves in. Although we are dispersed physically, we are together spiritually, emotionally. We are a real community here this morning. And so I invite you to use all of the methods you have to make yourself known, to be part of this community. Comment if you're able, sing along to everything at home, pray, take this time to really be with us, to be part of one community. I also invite you this morning, as usual, to use 
the form on our website, which is ccsm-ucc.org, there's a form on there that looks like prayer requests, and you can certainly use that for prayer requests. You can also use it just to introduce yourself to us. If you're new, we are exploring all kinds of new ways of being community dispersed across time and space, but really one with each other. So if you're new, wherever you're from, please do use that form to let us know who you are so we can be in touch with you and let you know other ways to be part of this community. I invite you to take a deep breath to set aside this moment, to make your home or wherever you are a worshiping space, to be present to what is coming with your heart and your mind and your spirit. And let's join together as we continue to worship by singing This Is My Song, which will morph into Be Still My Soul. It's the same tune. Take your time to sing along, to let your neighbors know that you're at worship this morning. Hello church, this is Dave Chandler, your moderator. I'm going to share one of my favorite hymns with you. No, I'm not going to play it. 
About 20 years ago, Jeff and I bought this piano. It's a player piano. One day my mom was visiting and I asked her to sit down and play my favorite hymn. It's actually hers and my favorite hymn. She didn't know that I could record her playing. I knew then, as I know now, that it would be a moment that could stay with me for as long as I can hear. When I hear her play this hymn, even though she's been gone from my life for almost three years, when I hear it, she's with me. And I will share with you that she had beautiful fingernails and when she'd play the piano, I could hear her fingernails clicking on the keys. You can't hear this, of course, but I can when I look back and I think back. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave, for sharing that beautiful memory of your mother with us. I'm sure that all of us listening in have memories of the loved ones who have gone on. And so I invite you to begin to say those names of those who you hold so dear in your heart, but who are no longer with us physically. I also invite you, if you are on Facebook, to Go ahead and add those names to the comments so that we can hold that memory with you and so those names can be lifted up. Chris and Maddie Ya yeah, are going to play for us Abide With Me, that beautiful hymn, reminding up us of God's presence now and always. So as they play, lift those names up and then Cheryl will lead us in prayer.
Thank you for lifting up those names, either in the chat or aloud, or just in your heart. Let's continue to hold those folks with us as we pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the shelter of the memories of so many who have touched our lives. God, we give you thanks for all those who have died have offered us their wisdom, their humor, their lessons. We give you thanks for those memories that we can hold with us especially in these difficult times, as a source of strength, inspiration, and connection to you. We know that not all memories are good ones or easy ones, and we know that you hold that complexity and that difficulty too. God, we know that nothing can separate us from your love and trust that those who have died are held deeply in your care. We hold those memories in our hearts and know that those memories are held in your hand as well. On this Sunday, we remember in particular those who have died in war. And so we'll, now we'll turn to a specific prayer to remember those. Loving God, from whom all life comes and to whom all life returns, we remember on this Sunday all who have served in the military. We remember and we give thanks. We give thanks for sacrifices made and for losses endured. We give thanks for acts of courage, grace, and hope. We give thanks for all who gave the full measure of devotion. We give thanks for those we knew well and for those we never met, for the life, faith, courage, and love that was in each one, we give thanks. We pray for those who are still recovering from wounds in body, mind, or spirit. God, work healing in them in all of the forms that healing takes. We pray for those who provide care, Show us the ways that we, too, can extend care and support. We pray for families and friends and all who grieve for loved ones who have died. We remember victims on all sides of war and the civilians living life on no side and grieve that so many lives have been cut short in our world due to violence. God, meet all who have died in the valley of death's shadow. Embrace them in the healing warmth of your comfort and grace. Grant them and all of us the insurance that nothing in life or death can separate us from the love of God, in whose name we pray. May the day soon come when swords are beaten into plowshares, War is studied no more, and all peoples in your world might know peace. May we work for this day. We pray this through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept crying, kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and the horses and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Thurmond, and it reads as if written for our time. Howard Thurmond was an important African-American thought leader in the first half of the 20th century. His theological studies and his conversations with Gandhi led him to a commitment to radical nonviolence in the pursuit of civil rights. He became an important mentor to Martin Luther King Jr. After almost 20 years as a professor and chaplain at Spelman, Morehouse, and Howard, Thurman moved to San Francisco to co-found the Church for the Fellowship of All Peoples, the first major interracial, interdenominational church in the United States. The Growing Edge. 
All around us, worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. All around us, life is dying and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree. The roots are silently at work in the darkness of the earth against the time when there shall be new leaves, fresh blossoms, green fruit, such is the growing edge. It is the extra breath from the exhausted lung, the one more thing when all else has failed, the upward reach of life when weariness closes in upon all endeavor. This is the basis of hope in moments of despair, the incentive to carry on when times are out of joint and persons have lost their reason, the source of confidence when worlds crash and dreams whiten into ash, the birth of a child, the most dramatic answer to death, this is the growing edge incarnate. I love how Howard Thurman's poem begins. All around us worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. All around us life is dying and life is being born. How true that is in regular times and how true that is now. He ends the poem with, look well to the growing edge. You know, it sounds beautiful, but growing means changing. And let's be truthful, very few of us adjust well to change. And change, though constant in our lives, requires letting go. And for most of us, letting go is not our strong suit. So when I think about the times that I have been bruised or injured physically, not letting go comes to mind. I don't know about you, but I've been water skiing and fallen and forgot to let go of the rope. And then walking my dog, walking along, just having a great time, and all of a sudden she sees a squirrel and she lunges with her 80-pound body. The easiest thing to do would be to let go of the leash, but oh no, I hang on to the leash. Three bruised ribs later. And then when I was in New York, I lived in a a fourth story apartment and it was a walk-up apartment and I was coming home in the winter and I had just come from the doctor where I'd had my cast taken off for having broken my hand and I was carrying groceries in my right arm and I tripped on the stairs uh, with my long winter coat on and instead of letting go of the groceries I broke the fall with my left hand and broke it again. So I'm, you know, constantly learning lessons about letting go. How about you? And you know what? When I've been bruised emotionally, much of the time, it's because I was hanging on. I couldn't let go of a relationship or a job or an outcome or an expectation or maybe even a dream or an identity. And it is that hanging on that grasping that caused me emotional pain. So letting go does not come easily for us. Only in hindsight can we see its benefits, really. The story Jean read for us about the two most famous prophets in the Hebrew Bible, Elijah and Elisha, is a story of change a story of one world dying and a new world being born. Elijah is taken up in a whirlwind by a fiery chariot. I loved this story as a kid. In fact, I told my mother that that's how I was going to die. I was going to go up in a fiery chariot, 
And I was that kind of kid that just said, well, if it happened for Elijah, why can't it happen for me? Well, Elisha is not too keen on this idea, and he cannot, he refuses to let Elijah go. Elijah just keeps saying to Elisha, stay here. I need to go on by myself. But Elisha, with an oath three times, as surely as the Lord lives and as surely as I live, I will not leave you. So they go on and they reach Bethel. They come to a community of prophets. The prophets say to Elisha, don't you know that your master is going to be taken up today? And Elisha says, keep silent. Don't speak. So I thought about Elisha's response. I was thinking it was probably about denial. I don't want to talk about it. Because if we don't talk about it, it's not happening. That certainly happened a lot in my house growing up. If we didn't talk about it, it wasn't happening. It was kind of that la, 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 I can't hear you. But also, sometimes silence is an appropriate response. Sometimes things are too painful to talk about at that moment. Sometimes tragic things happen and silence is really the only response. This week, tragic hap tragedy happened to members of our congregation. There were no words that I could think of for comfort. Just silence, presence. And when I read about Ahmad Obri, the young man who was jogging, the young black man who was jogging and was shot, and it took them 10 weeks to arrest somebody even though they know who did it. Silence in the face of yet another young black man being killed for no reason. Sometimes we have to be silent and look within in order to let go of what we wish was true to accept what is. And when we accept what is, then we can begin to think about the change we want to become to change the situation. So letting go does not come naturally to us. And letting go also happens in stages. They went to Bethel, then they went to Jericho, Elisha was still there, then they went to the Jordan, Elisha was still there. And those three places were deeply significant spiritually. Bethel, that's where Jacob had his vision of the ladder going up and down into heaven. Jericho is where they fought the battles and the Jordan, over and over again in the life of the Hebrew people, the Jordan River is symbolic of going from one world into another. They were symbolic then, and I want to say that metaphorically they mean something now. Bethel, simply as Beth El, the house of God. We have had to leave the house of God, our house of God. It's hard to let go of that, isn't it? I know it's powerful to be able to tune in together like this, and I'm so grateful for it, but it doesn't replace coming together in our sanctuary. In Jericho, we're fighting a spiritual battle and a physical battle, trying to be with what is, not knowing what will come. In the Jordan River, we are between worlds, not knowing what is on the other side. Letting go happens in stages. Just think about when someone you love is dying. We want to hang on. Oh, just, just one more holiday. Just one more time. And do it when people are just leaving even. Oh, just stay one more day. 
We want things to be permanent and nothing is permanent. And grief, you know as well as I do, it has its own stages. Just when you think you might have grieved something enough, something else will happen and bring it up again and you go to another level. Letting go happens in stages. And letting go requires a shift in our thinking. I returned this week to Pima Chodron's book, When Things Fall Apart. I read it years ago when uh, basically things were falling apart in my own life. Pima's a wonderful Buddhist teacher. And she says, things falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing. We think that the point is to pass the test or to overcome the problem, but the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and fall apart again. It's just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen, room for grief, for relief, for misery, for joy. And she says, and this is what I want you to hear, if we're willing to give up hope that insecurity and pain can be exterminated, then we will have the courage to relax with the groundlessness of our situation. The hope that suffering won't go away, that's the wrong kind of hope. Because suffering exists. You know, as your minister, I would, I don't think, ever tell you to let go of hope. But I will invite you to let go of magical thinking. That magical thinking that if only this happens, then I'll be all right. Or someday, if this happens, I'll be strong and I'll be the loving person that I want to be. That kind of magical thinking keeps us from being in the moment and doing in the moment what is required of us with open hearts. You know, Elijah wasn't able to shake Elisha, so he says to him, as one might finally say to a child, okay, what will it take? And Elisha says, I want, a, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah says, all right, well, if you see me go up into heaven, then you will get that. And the story ends with Elisha indeed seeing Elijah being taken away in a whirlwind of spirit. The story ends with Elisha tearing his clothes in anguish and in grief for having lost his dear one. But in the acceptance of grief, of change, and in the letting go, he did receive that double portion. And in fact, he became an even greater and more powerful prophet than Elijah. He did have that double portion of spirit. So beloved community, none of us can shield ourselves from grief or loss or change, but all of us have the capacity for more love, more power, more grace, more spirit. So, in these troubling times, are you beginning to let go? Because all around us, worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. So look well to the growing edge. Ask for more spirit and let go. Let be, show up, ask for help, and give help, then rinse and repeat. Amen. When
Thank you, Melanie, so much for embodying the message I was trying to give in such a beautiful song. Appreciate it so much. As always, we want to continue to be generous, and today our plate offering will go to Peninsula Food Runners. Their goal is to alleviate hunger and minimize food waste in the Bay Area. They provide prepared and non-prepared food support to all the kind of food support organiza organizations. In any given week, they deliver 50,000 meals to shelters, to food banks, to pantries, and to low-income families. They provide an incredible service, and it is needed more now than ever. And so if you would text your plate offering or give online, the instructions should be on the screen as well as in your bulletin. The offerings you give are taken and then sent the very next week to that organization. In our congregation, I know that Warren Long and Ann Fuller were very involved in Peninsula Food Runners and also Dave Carlin a long time ago. So thank you as always for your generosity. Now let's join in singing together our closing hymn, Be Now My Vision.
We hope that you have been uplifted by joining in and tuning in in this service today. Thank you for all your comments. We hope that you have remembered your loved ones and also been reminded of the spiritual lesson we have to learn over and over again of letting go. I want to leave you with this. I read it this week from Nadia Boltz Weber. She's a kind of out of the box Lutheran minister that I follow from time to time and I will adapt what she says. So as we can't be together, think of bringing more spirit and more sacrament into your home. And she says something like this. I don't know when we can gather again to worship God, so now I just ask that when I sing along as I vacuum and listen to James Taylor, that it be counted as praise. When I read the news and my heart tightens in my chest, that it be counted as a curie. That when my eyes brighten and a smile behind my mask as I thank the cashier, that it may be counted as passing the peace. When I water my plants and wash my dishes and take a shower, may it be counted or may I remember all the baptisms that happened in this place. And when the tears come and my shoulders shake and breathing falters, may it be counted as prayer. And as I sit at the table in my house with my family and eat one more homemade meal, may it be counted as communion. May the Spirit pour out a double portion on you and your household now and in the weeks ahead. Join as we sing together our sung benediction. Beloved, hear anew the words of Jesus. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. A peace that the world cannot give and a peace that the world cannot take away. And may the blessing of the Holy One, that source of all that is good, may with you now and always. Amen.